Hi, and welcome to the Real Estate of Mind Show. We're your host, Glenn and Amber. Hello, everybody. We help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. Another great show lined up today. We're going to be talking about your beliefs about money. Yep. And some of those are like deeply ingrained from childhood. Yes. And so I think that, you know, as we've gone through life, we've realized we get, you know, you're you're only going to make as much as you believe that you're supposed to make, right? And your 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 life will be a direct reflection of your thoughts about money. And no money won't bring you happiness, but lack of money will bring tremendous stress into your life. I know firsthand, we know firsthand. Right. So it can be very tough to do that. And so, some of us have those beliefs, like I said, that were ingrained in us from childhood, or maybe we don't think we should have a lifestyle that was that was better than our own childhood. Yeah. Um, in the in those ways, you know, we have like these self limiting beliefs. So we're gonna kind of delve into that today and talk about you know, we talk about our real estate mindset. That's the name of our podcast. We're gonna talk about your money mindset. You know, if you think about it, there's 24 hours in the day. And, you know, people that are millionaires or billionaires or hundredaires, they've all got the same 24 hours. It's what they do with that time that determines their financial well-being. But more importantly, it's how they think about money, how they were raised to think about money. You know, what you, what makes you scared? What makes you um, think about, when you think about wealth, do you think about bad things? You know, do you think about people that are, you know, money's the root of all evil? Do you think of those kind of comments? Yeah, there's even some religious beliefs that people get, um, they maybe twist in some way that make, you know, money's bad. Yeah. I've had to really overcome a lot of thoughts about money in my world, just the way I was raised and stuff. And so we were raised pretty, you know, pretty, pretty poor. Um, you know, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. And so my mom, um, you know, talked about that a lot. And so it's, it's, uh, it's something that we, we've had to work through on our end. So we've got some tips today to sort of help you getting over your, um, you know, how you think about money. Because we want to make sure you're, you're wildly successful, but you're only going to make what you think you deserve. And if you make too much, you'll find a way to get rid of it. Yep. If you think about this, lottery winners, I don't know the actual statistic, but it's something like 95% of people that win the lottery within three years have lost it all. And these are people that don't just, don't just win a million. People win five, 10, $50 million. I think sometimes it takes them five million to piss through that money, but why? They either don't think they deserve it or they don't know how to manage it or it's just more than they can wrap their arms around and they just don't know what to do with it so they give it away or people come at them and they don't know how to say no. And Glenn has an expression that's actually one of my favorites that money makes you more of what you already are because some people are hung up on you know, money's going to make you a bad person or you have to be unethical or, you know, being, you know, being materialistic is bad and all of that kind of stuff. Glenn and I actually aren't materialistic people. I mean, we, we do like nice things, but for us, life is about experiences and, and sharing and giving yeah. and being generous. And, but, you know, get, getting past those self-limiting beliefs and how we were raised about money is a big deal. So we're going to talk, you know, obviously our reference point is real estate investing. That's our reference point because that's what we do. We, help people create wealth through real estate and investing. So that's what we do, help everyday people create wealth. Um, but I wanna, this, what we're gonna talk to you about will work at anything. So there's three real tips, education, association, and then implementation. So education, association, and implementation. That's a mouthful. It's Say a that three times real fast. No, you can't do that. So your EI, what, what would the, does it be? EAI, Never mind. E-A-I. There's, no, there's no real good acronym for that. So education, uh, association, and implementation. So let's talk about education first. So I think the first thing is you have to decide what it is you want to learn about, right? There could be, maybe you want to make money in farming, right? Maybe you want to make money in Bitcoin. Maybe you want to be in the stock market. Obviously for us, it's real estate investing, but... um, And if you're listening to this podcast, that's probably why you're here too. Probably. So we're going to kind of sort of stay on that topic. So if you want to um, learn about how to get money or learn about how to, to create money in whatever field you choose, of course, ours is real estate investing, you've got to get educated, right? You have to learn how other people have come before you and have made money in the same field. We live in a world where most, you know, there'll always be something new invented, but most things are there, right? There's a lot of things that are already there and implemented. And so people have come before you and done that. So I think you have to find out how you can get educated in the, in the path that you're choosing to get wealthy. Again, if you're here for real estate, obviously come to our home living workshop, a little self-promotion there. Um, and we'd love to, to teach you what we do and how we've done it. Unless you're one of those really hard-headed people that just thinks you have to learn from the School of Hard Knocks. But we're here to tell you that the School of Hard Knocks is very expensive. <laughs> and exhausting. Yes. Let's not forget that part because it's exhausting. It's just, it taxes you. So what we did 
we first got started and we bought courses. So we bought a course online uh, together. We bought a cor- course from Carlton Sheets. It was yeah. $5,000. We talked to that woman. Yeah. We talked to her a few times. We had some coaching calls. Her. Got this she, really fancy calculator. We did. Yeah. We fought for having two calculators. We were, yeah. Yeah, you were in Dallas and I was here. And um, so we had our first education that we started to learn about that. And then we went out and bought a property. We did not do it right. Um, we made a lot of mistakes on that one. But when we decided we wanted to really become flippers a few years later, right. we really wanted to get serious about it. I think you had always wanted to stick with rental portfolios. Love the passive income. Rental, yeah, always properties. wanted passive income, yeah. I loved the idea of flipping. I have a more creative nature. And so the idea of, you know, taking something ugly and turning it into something beautiful and making money while you're doing it was really, really appealing to me. Well, I think the education is what helped me because right. her getting me educated on flipping, the one thing she said, we sat down and at the time we needed to make money. Right. That was one really important for us. So we sat in this, so we drove to Connecticut, which was about a two hour drive, two and a half hour drive. And there was, a, I don't know, probably about, I don't know, 500 people in the room, maybe not that many, three, maybe a couple hundred people in the room, whatever it was. And it was a lot of people there though. And they were, this woman had flipped over 250 houses. She was called the queen of rehab. And I remember thinking to myself at the time, 250 houses, that's insane. I just want to flip one, right? Maybe you're in that boat. And I remember thinking that now we've done over 600, but, but it's, it's, uh, it started with one though. But the education piece was over as we sat in the audience, I remember her saying, you know, you can make 200 bucks a month or you can go out and make 25 or $30,000 in one pop. And which one sounds better to you? And at the time, and they both sound better, but that sounded great. I thought to myself, yeah, our rental at that time was barely making a hundred bucks a month. Right. And, and it was a headache. It was a whole, we weren't doing it right. So it was a whole headache. Again, I wasn't educated enough on how right. to do it. I had the, the course, but the coaching wasn't quite but a, we as much. We had kind of an know. old school mentality. And, you know, these days there are so many resources that you have and even technology and companies that do property management, the resources that are available today to, to, I think you have to kind of get out of that old school mindset too. Yeah. That's part of the education. You have to educate right. yourself on all the options that are out there and what to do. So that's what we did. We educated ourselves. And then that's what we decided to flip. We flipped our first house. You know, we did one the first year, three the next year, seven the next year, 20. And maybe you've heard our story by now um, of how we've grown into the business that we do now between 80 and 100 deals a year. And we're trying to grow that to be more like 150 to 200 deals a year and take our steps so we get bigger and bigger. So, but that's, that's what we're doing. But we have to educate ourselves. Matter of fact, on Tuesday, we fly out. Uh, we're part of a mastermind where you, uh, it's a, it's a big mastermind and you have to, you have to qualify. You have to do at least 50 deals a year just to be in this mastermind group. And we're going out there to get educated. Right. We're going out there to, to meet, basically leads into our next thing we'll talk about. Yeah, Iron Sharpens Iron. Is association. So, yeah. so education is number one. You've got to get educated in whatever field you choose. Obviously for us, it's real estate investing. We know about that. We can help you with real estate investing. That's what we do. But any area you choose to build wealth in, you're going to have to get educated. It won't be a lottery ticket where you're just lucky. Yeah. And I think, too, when you're looking at real estate in particular, if you just go on Google and type in something, there are so many different ways you can go with real estate investing. You know, pick one or two and focus on those. Because if you try to do every aspect of real estate investing that there is, it just, you know, it's overwhelming and you will never do any of it. So, you know, focus on flipping and maybe rental portfolios or you know, if you're more interested in commercial, if that, or, or multifamilies, you know, pick something and get really educated in that field. And then as the, as you master that, then you can kind of grow from there too. Totally. So next is going to be association. So education is first, then association. What does that mean? Well, you have got to be around the people that are making the kind of money you want to make. If you're not, the people that you're with now can't help you understand or get there. They don't speak the same language. No offense to them. They're not going to challenge your thoughts. They're not going to know. How, not that they're bad people. They may be family. They may be people that you love. They may be your best friend. Yeah. But, you know, people only ha- only can give what they have. So if they don't have that knowledge to give you or they're not making the kind of income that you need to make, then how can you expect them to help you get to the next level? They've proven many times over, and I forgot who did the study, like Yale or one of those big, one of those uh, colleges, did a study that you will earn the average of your top five closest friends. Think about that for a minute. If you think about your friends that you're around, most of the time you earn the average of them. So if you don't have some people in there, that group with some high incomes, you want to increase your average by have, you know getting yourself around another group of people. They think different. They talk different. There's a reason why they have more money because they have different thoughts about money than you do. They expect something different of themselves. You might say to yourself, well, I, I'm making $40,000 a year and that's all I can do. You know, I'd like to make more, but you don't really know how to do it. Well, you get around people that are making four hundred thousand dollars a year. Do you think they think differently than the person making forty thousand? 
Of course they do, right? They're, they have a different thought pattern about money. They expect their lifestyle is demanding a certain amount of income. So they go out and get it. They expect that of themselves. So by you associating with those kind of people, you can start to increase your average. Again, if you're gonna earn the top five, if you're gonna earn the average of your top five closest friends, look at your friends. Yeah, and I was thinking too, maybe even those people that you're talking about that have the higher expectations and lifestyles, maybe they grew up in a household where their parents didn't struggle. Glenn and I both grew up in households where we didn't have a lot of money. I can remember as a kid, going every every Friday night, my parents would take my two brothers and I out to dinner and we would split one meal between the three of us kids. <laughs> so, you know, we, we didn't grow up with a lot of money. So our our ideas about money were not always to the level they needed right, to be. No. And so, you know, when you get around other people, maybe they didn't have those self-limiting beliefs. Maybe they grew up in households that more were affluent and didn't have the, I can't afford that mentality. Um, our kids will grow up very different than we did. Well, they will because of the conversations that they overhear us having. And, you know, we, we don't shelter them from those conversations. We want them to have that expanded mindset. Yeah, they hear us talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars. They Not, hear, they hear, yeah, they hear versus different. hundreds of dollars, and I can't afford that. Right. For your we, don't, we never say I can't afford. If someone says, hey, you know, why aren't we on the beach yet? And, you know, we'll say, well, we're working towards that. We're figuring that out right now. We're working towards that goal right now. We let them know we're working towards a goal. So our, they, we can hopefully instill in our children a different mindset about money. They're used, you know, they're kind of, they'll have, a, they'll have a rude awakening so when they go to pay for their own five-star <laughs> resort and go, how much? <laughs> so, yeah, but you know, right now we do a lot of great vacations. Again, Amber said we're all about experiences. I saw a post on Instagram, I think it was yesterday, and it said, um, you can't change the people that you're around, but you can change the people you're around. Oh, it's the great. exact same sentence, that's but you know, depending on what emphasis you put on what that's word, great. it okay, yeah. totally changes the meaning. That's very true. So when you start looking at your friends, again, don't don't you know just leave your friends. Just in, expand your circle of friends. So where do you do that? Local associations are really good. There's business groups you can get involved with. There's you know real estate groups you can get involved with. There are there are places out there that that there are people looking for those types of friendships and whatever. And don't be a weirdo. Don't be don't go up there and be begging on them every two seconds about what to do and what to do. Build relationships with those people. Find out what you can offer them. I think right. the best friendships are when you ask questions and listen. You know, ask questions and just listen to them. And build a friendship by getting to know them. Don't talk about yourself. They're the ones that have what you want. So just talk to them. See if a friendship blossoms. Just be yourself. If friendship doesn't blossom, go find somebody else in that group. But find that. And that's exactly what we did. Yeah. We got started. We went to a local, it's called the RIA. It's called the Real Estate Investment Association. And the first thing we went to when we first got started was kind of... Um, it wasn't the best, you know, really we went to it. It, it. it was sort of heading downhill and it became this sales fest. But then we went to another one called AIN. And this group we went to met in the back of a local bar. There was probably about 10, 15, maybe, maybe 15 yeah. people. And, maybe and there 18. were basically two leaders of it. Um, one of them was a super nice guy, but the other one just rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> he did. He, <laughs> he was he's, very male chauvinist. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a real, he, I think his heart was in the right place, but he definitely didn't. He didn't know how to talk to a pretty woman that was successful. It was kind of like, ah, uh, he wasn't quite sure what that was. So Amber, he rubbed her the wrong way. So, but, but we kept going because we knew in that group were people that... Had what we wanted. Yeah, they were successful as real estate investors. Now, when you walk into a room, you don't always know. A lot of times, the one who's blabbing about being the most successful is not the most successful. So stay quiet. That's what we do. We stay quiet and we watch for several months. And we kind of just see who's doing deals and what's happening. So you really, when you're associating, make sure you're associating with the right people, right? When you're in a group, if someone's, I remember walking in that group and someone was blabbing how successful they were. It turns out that guy wasn't successful. He just liked to blab a lot. Yeah. And the other thing I was thinking about too is that saying, you know, if you're the smartest person in the room, you better find room. a different room. I just did a video because on sometimes that, yeah. our ego can kind of get in the way and, you know, we feel like all of a sudden we're this big fish in a small pond and, you know, we're feeling pumped and, you know, this is really great yeah. and I'm the top dog around here and all that. But do you want to stay at that level or do you want to grow? So we sought out that RIA, that Real Estate Investment Association called AIN. And after about three or four years of being a part of it, I started to give back to them. So part of my, part of my um, advice for you today is in an association, give what you can give. So I like to educate people on what I did. So I put together a slide presentation. I said, would you guys like me to present for the next six months? And every time I'll do a segment on how to be a successful real estate investor. And I got done and they said, you could sell that. That's, you're talking about, this is infomercial stuff. This is like, this education is, people pay tens of thousands for what you're giving away right now. 
And I said, okay, great. They liked us so much that after a couple years, these guys moved away and we, we took over the Rio. We actually bought it from them. We took it over. We went from 40 people when we left, or about 40 people that were coming to the event, to now we have over 140 people, 40 to 140 that show up every month at our group. And that's become a really powerful networking group. So that's just the power of association. Um, and then the the next part I told you about before, about how we were, we, did I talk about that, going to the other group? No. Oh, so we're leaving tomorrow to go to a different, to go to, or leaving on Tuesday to go right. to San Diego to a group that we joined. I sure I didn't cover this already. Well, you, you, you said we had to qualify for it by doing 50 deals yeah. a year, but you didn't talk about the importance of why it's going. Yeah. And it's, and it's what I said earlier, iron sharpens iron. You know, we, we went there last December was our first meeting and at this other mastermind, right. because we have to be, we're, we're kind of a big fish in a little pond and we want to, we want to get out of that and be a small fish in an ocean. We want to get around the big sharks to see what they're doing. So we go there and it, you have to check your ego at the door you do. because you are, you're no longer the big fish. There no. are people that are doing a lot bigger deals and different kinds of deals and commercial and multifamilies and the storage units and yeah. Airbnb portfolios. And you know, it's really, it really expanded our vision and it was, it was not cheap for us to join this group. It was $25,000 just to be a part of it. Plus travel, all the travel. You're talking you know? about 35, 40 grand a year to be right. part of it. But Glenn and I, even as we teach and show other people how to invest in real estate, we still see the value of expanding our growth even more. And then we get to share that with all of you guys too. So association is really key because it, it helps you to think differently. You, you only know what you know. You don't know what you don't know. Right. Um, and so getting around other people, you're, you're, I'm thinking about Frank at that event. We were at that event and he was talking about how he had just wholesaled the deal for a, about a, oh, $2, a million, yeah. $2 million wholesale fee. Now there were some intricacies to that that I wanted to know, but he spoke in front of the room about this $2 million um, um, assignment fee. And I'm like, a wholesale fee for $2 million. Well, there was, there, was, there was some meat to that. Of course, there's always a story behind the story. Well, as it turned out, we were in the same restaurant that they were on the last night after the event had dismissed, and they said, come join us. So we went to the room, and we joined them, and we, they paid for the meal, and this other mortgage company was there, and they, we met all these people, and we, get, we had intimate conversations with them, nothing weird, but about business. We got to learn things because we're having meetings that are not in the meeting, if that well, makes sense. We did have a lot of really good wine that night. A lot of good wine, too. That really helped. That does help loosen up the conversation. But we learned a lot, and we got in the plane and said, we've got to grow. We have to grow. If we want to continue to be one of the biggest ones in the country, we have to go. And here we are. We're going to fly out again. We leave our family for four days. We invested a lot of money and time because it's a, this this particular one's in California. So for, it's a five, for us, the time is even more important than the money. It is. It's yeah. the five days. So my point is, associate with people that have what you want. It's the only way for you to actually get where you want to get to. And then just by being around those people and in those groups, even if you don't know anybody to begin with, had we not been at that event we would have never ended up at dinner that night with those guys to hear no. the even more in detail stuff. So just opportunities will present themselves. It's yeah. not like you have to even force it to happen. You know, they can happen really organically. Opportunities present themselves that you can um, take advantage of, not in like a bad way that you're taking advantage yeah. of another person, but just that, that you get to have those experiences that you would otherwise never be a part of. During association, be yourself, but be humble. Be yourself, be humble, and ask a lot and of be questions. Helpful. And be helpful, yeah, right, yeah. yeah, do what you can to help. Last but not least is implementation. So we have education, association, but implementation. So once you find out what it is you want, again, let's say it's real estate investing, and then you wanna associate, get around people that have what you want, now you have to implement a plan. You have to say to yourself, what is my next step? And whatever that is for you, we can only talk about real estate investing, but you know, for us, it's gonna be going out and finding that first house. Once you've got the education and the association, now you want to implement what are you going to do next, right? If you want to be a stock market investor or whatever, you have to find out what your next steps are. If you're going to be a real estate investor, say, what, what, what do I want to specialize in? Am I going to be wholesale? Am I going to do residential? Am I going to do commercial? Am I going to do larger apartment buildings? Am I going to do Airbnb? Find a niche that you want to be in and then set up an action plan to get started in that process because you have to be able to implement, right? I'm going to back up one second and then I'm going to jump on this. I'm going to piggyback on what you're saying too. As far as association goes, you're the boss, whatever you'd like to do. You can associate with Glenn and I, you know, make sure that you like our Facebook page we, on Glenn and Amber Swarm. Um, you just, you know, 
Go to yeah. the search field and like it. Make sure you're on our Instagram page. Make sure that you're following our iTunes and our YouTube channel because we put out a ton of content that can be really, really valuable. We personally answer any questions that come yeah, up. Yeah, so the throw iTunes them out there. And so, you know, we're, we're offering our hand right now for you to associate with us if you want to. And as far as implementation goes, I... It seems like I'm, I'm thinking, sitting here thinking back, a lot of our podcasts end in taking action. Yeah. Because the education part and even getting around other people part, those are, those are, that's kind of busy work. You know, it's important and it's, you need to have that foundation. But when it comes to taking action, that's where the real estate of mind comes in because a lot of people get to that point and they just let fear hold them back yeah. or, you know, some other reason, whatever, whatever that reason is it holds them back from taking action. So that that's so important. And I think it encompasses so many topics is you have to implement, you have to take action if you want to see any results. Yeah. So you got to find out what that, what those action steps are for you. Again, in real estate, it's going to be, if you want to flip a house, you got to find the house, you have to fund the house, then you got to fix it and hire your contractors. Then you have to um, sell, it. sell it and get your profit. And that's, negotiate. yeah, negotiate. There's a lot of little steps in between, but that you want to find, fund, fix, flip and if you want to have it be a rental you'll hold that house right so that's kind of the, the steps that you'll do there's other videos that go into detail on those but right now that's what you want to do when you want to implement you have to have some kind of step to say what's my next move and i tell you if you want to flip a house you got to find a house right if you start with that the money will come together and all that kind of stuff yeah, and we so. always tell our students too you know don't worry about step 567 nope just Think about step the next one. step, next one step. step at a time, yeah. one step at a time. So remember, your your beliefs about money will determine how much of it you actually have. So I, I hope that you found this helpful. There, Let's just cover the last three steps, just, just recap real quick. Yep, so first of all, you're gonna get educated yep. in whatever field that you wanna go into. Yep. The next step is you're gonna get around the right people, association, yep. get around the people that have what you want. Uh, Anthony Robbins said success leaves clues, so go find those people and, and listen to them and be as helpful as Proximity. you can. Proximity. Yeah, proximity. proximity is power. Get, get around the people that, that have what you want. Exactly. Yep. And then the third step is taking action. You have to implement. Implement, and that's what we do. So education, association, implementation, change your thoughts about money, expand your vision, get new people you associate with, and boom, you'll find yourself in a whole different place. You wake up a day, what's that talking head song? You may ask yourself, my God, how did I get here? Yeah. Right? Letting the days roll by. I'm not going to sing for you, but you know, if you're from the 80s, you remember that song, and that's sort of what happens. You start taking these steps. One day you wake up and go, wow, I'm actually becoming the person that I wanted to be. So, all right. We hope you found this helpful. If you did, you know someone that struggles with money and someone that really has money beliefs and wants more and, they, you know, they're, they're not quite sure what to do. Like Amber said, please share this with them. Yeah. Share the podcast with them. Share their name down in one of the comments, wherever you are on social media and, uh, and do your thing. And yeah. we will look forward to seeing you next time on our Real Estate of Mind show. We'll see you next time. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave us a review and leave us your questions and comments and we will personally answer and please share it to anyone you think could benefit. You can find us all over social media at Glenn and Amber Swarm. We'll see you next week.